Happy October. Hi everyone, my name is Tommy. Thank you for being here on Moonstone Makes for my October knitting and reading vlog. I'm a bat, as you can see. This is my Halloween costume, and I thought I would don it for this intro. So this is going to be a vlog style video about what I plan to do in the month of October. And I have two kind of main things I want to do. I want to knit my Chartreuse cardigan. I am using Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is their worsted weight in the Long John's colorway. I would really like to get that whole sweater knit this month. We'll see how it goes. I also want to read certain books this month. So every October for the past like two or three years, I've done themed reading for the month of October. Okay, I quit the bat costume. That was too hot. So last year I read all of po Edgar Allan Poe's works. The year before that I read Dracula, which is funny because my goal for the whole month of October two years ago was to read one book. This year I have seven physical books that I wanna read and one audiobook. And then later I decided I wanted to read two more books. So I have two more like bonus books that we'll see if I get to, I don't know. <sighs> but my kind of theme for this month is like kind of gentle, mild horror vibes. I don't wanna go like full on horror. I'm not that much of a horror person. I like the idea of horror, but I kinda can't, I don't know. I'm learning how I like horror right now. Uh, I think I like a more gentle, creepy, unsettling kind of horror. Uh, certain types of horror, especially with movies, uh, just scare me too much. So I chose seven, eight books that I thought had like a horror, creepy, maybe like dark folktale kind of vibe to them. And I'm really excited about the literary vibes for this month. So let me tell you what I'm gonna read. First book is a ghost story. It's called The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. I know almost nothing about this book other than it's a ghost story. It was written in, I believe, the 1980s. And I wanna say there's a house and some marshes that surround it and a ghost, and that's all I know. But the cover is beautiful and people really love it. I think this is a classic. I'm very excited about this one. The whole like, Ghost Story 80s vibe. The next book on my list is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is a gothic horror novel and I don't know much about it other than it takes place in a dilapidated house in the hills of Mexico and it's creepy, it's scary. Somebody, a woman I think goes to this house and like, I don't know. Stuff happens, it's mildly scary, I think. I don't know, we'll see. I'm very excited about this one. Carmilla by J. Sheridan Lefanu. Uh, this is pre a pre-Bram Stoker's Dracula vampire novel about a woman vampire. And it's very short. It's probably written in the 1800s. OG vampire fiction with a girl vampire. What's not to love? This is a collection of short stories by H.P. Lovecraft, and the one that I plan to read particularly is the title one, which is The Call of Cthulhu. And I've never read H.P. Lovecraft, but I recently read Our Wives Under the Sea, which I just think was influenced by Lovecraft. Like, I think the vibe and like certain things in that book were very Lovecraftian, and I'm interested in Lovecraft, and apparently The Call of Cthulhu is like the big one, so that's the one I'm gonna read, but there are more short stories in here. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to dive into the, Love the Lovecraftian world because he's supposed to be like the originator of like the something's lurking in the shadows, but you never actually find out exactly what it is kind of horror thing, which I think is what I like, so. Short story, that'll be easy. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Can you see it? Frankenstein. I've never read Frankenstein before, so I'm gonna do it. It's Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. What more can you say? I'm gonna read it. I am stoked about this one. It's called We Have Always Lived in the Castle. It's by Shirley Jackson, and it has the most amazing book cover I've ever seen in my entire life. It's, I think it's another like gothic book. I don't know if it's actually horror or if it's just creepy, I don't really know. But it's about this girl, whose name I don't know, and she lives alone with her sister and her whole family is dead. 
And that's what I know about her. I think they live in like a giant house. And it's very short. People love this book. Everybody loves this book. I think I'm gonna love this book. I cannot wait to read this book. I think kind of the overall thing with this month is kind of gothic horror. I think I'm going with a gothic horror thing. And if you know my history with gothic literature, I don't always love it, but I think gothic horror is where the sweet spot is for me. I don't know, I'm experimenting. And my audiobook for this month is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. What I know about this one is that it's about three sisters who in the past had disappeared for a month. No one ever found out what happened to them, but when they returned in a very mysterious way, they showed back up, all their hair had turned white, their eyes had turned black, something was off about them, something was wrong with them, and they didn't remember what happened during that month that they were missing. And they become like internet sensation conspiracy theory thingies. <laughs> They're just trying to live their lives, and then the next thing you know, the older sister goes missing again when they're a little bit older and the two sisters are trying to figure out what's going on. That's kind of what I know about it. I think it's supposed to have like these like old world, not knowing what's going on, creepy, maybe something with fairies kind of thing. I don't really know, but I'm excited about that one too. Now my two bonus books uh, came to me a little later and I really want to read them, but if I don't get to them that's this month, that's okay. The first one is Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. And I have this one on Kindle. Uh, this is, I think, I want to say it's Southern Gothic, maybe fantasy, maybe sci-fi horror, about early 1900s, KKK is trying to take over the world, and there's a band of, like, rebel people trying to stop them, and I think, I think it's fantasy, sci-fi horror, or something. I don't know. It's like... It's historical fiction. It's like a reimagining of uh, slavery, racism, KKK dumb in the United States in the early 1900s. So that's that one. I hear it's really good. It's very short. This is the book club book for uh, Pocket Pages, which is uh, Allison Page's Patreon book club that I'm a part of. So I want to read it for that. And then the other one is a book called Leech by Huron Enos. And this is a new one that just came out. I've been wanting to read this ever since I found out about it before it was released and it just got released. So I kind of want to read it really badly. This is supposed to be gothic horror about parasites or diseases or something, maybe the end of the world, I'm not sure. But gothic horror, sci-fi are like the three words that really pulled me into this one because there isn't that much gothic horror sci-fi, I don't think. But all of those three words are right up my alley and if you put them all together, I think I'm going to be very happy. So those are my plans. I want to knit a sweater and read 10 books. We'll see how it goes. Come and join the ride with me. It is October 3rd, and I am sick. It's been a pretty rocky three weeks around here. Everyone in my family has gotten sick with this pretty gnarly cold, including my husband, his parents, who are my childcare some of the time, and then Lucy got it really bad, and then I got it pretty mildly, and then River got it really bad, and now I have it really bad. <laughs> so... It's been a bummer of an autumnal start. I was really hoping for something a little more festive for the beginning of October, but it's okay. I'm still enjoying the thing that I'm doing for October, which is reading all of these spooky books. And I have like set knitting ideas. I don't want to say plans or goals, but set knitting ideas for this month. And I'm getting really excited about all of these things. So today... 
Lucy stayed home from school for a couple days, including last Friday and today, which is Monday. But she did go to her grandparents' house today, luckily. So that's a little bit of a break. I still have River here, so I'm not able to just like rest in bed all day, which is my dream right now. But he is taking a nap, so I'm here in the bed with all my stuff around me. And I thought I'd kind of show you what I'm doing. I have been reading Frankenstein and I'm really enjoying it so far, which I'm pleasantly surprised by. I tend to, at this point in my life, struggle a little bit with classics. When I was younger, when I was in my 20s, I loved classics. That's like all I wanted to read. And at this point, I don't know, I'm just so much more enamored with contemporary fiction. And I find that oftentimes I struggle to, I guess, relate to classic fiction, or I tend to dwell too much on things that are outdated to me. But I've really been enjoying this. I'm still pretty early on, and I just got past the letters from R. Walton to his sister. So now I'm on to the story. I'm on chapter one now. And I'm really enjoying it. I'm really excited to get into the chapter parts of the book. Um, I bought this copy from my local bookshop and whenever you buy a book from my local bookshop they let you pick from one of their bookmarks which they have like a huge selection of these little handmade bookmarks and they're all really really cool. They all have different things printed on them. So the one that I'm using for this is this really cool like metallic owl. I did finish The Call of Cthulhu uh, by H.P. Lovecraft the other night. I finished that. I read that whole story on October 1st. It's like 30 pages long. And it was my very first H.P. Lovecraft. I won't get into it too much now. I'll tell you about it later. But I really liked the story. I liked the imagery. I get the vibe. I liked it. It was very hard to me, hard for me to get past that early 1900s just like rampant racism though. <laughs> I just couldn't. I just... I am working on some knitting right now while I'm hanging out in bed while River naps. And I'm watching one of my favorite booktubers who is Allison Pages. I'm watching her latest video about uh, the announcement of her readathon, which is in November, which I'm definitely going to do. And I'm knitting on my Chartreuse cardigan. And uh, this thing is so fiddly so far. I cannot wait to get past like the fiddly parts, which is up here. But here's what it's looking like at this point. It's got a lot of needles and things attached to it. But I'm using Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the Long John's colorway, which is such a, which is such a good colorway. I love it so much. And it's got an attached knit as you go collar. And this is like the upper right shoulder here. And there's lots of different needles on this thing. Um, so it's super fiddly right now, and I'm not quite enjoying it yet, but I think once I get past all the arm stuff, because it's top down, then I'll enjoy it more. What I'm really excited about is, you guys might know that I'm really into this app called Knit Companion. Uh, it's a free, but also if you want better options, it's a paid for app for uh, Android or Apple. Uh, and I've always used it on my phone, and I love it. I use it for all my knitting patterns. I recently got an iPad. Thank you patrons. That's what's allowed me to get this iPad. And I'm hoping with this iPad, I'm gonna be able to up my game a little bit on editing my YouTube videos and also doing digital art for Patreon. Uh, but another perk is that I moved my Knit Companion app over to my iPad, so it's for Apple too. And this is right now my first time using it, and it's so good. I just kind of wanted to show you. I'm showing you a chart. It's like a minor chart. Like, I know people are worried about that sometimes, but like, you guys are not going to steal this whole sweater from this one chart. <laughs> but I just wanted to show you how helpful it is. For one, it's big. I've been struggling with this pattern on my phone because my phone's just small. So I've been trying to knit, and I'm like, eh, I'm kind of older now. So I'm like, I can't see anything. And so I just on a whim decided to put it on my iPad and oh my gosh, it's wonderful. So it's nice because it's really big. So this is one of the pages. And it's also nice because as I'm following along on this one little chart, this is like an at the same time kind of chart. 
Uh, what I can do is use the little pencil app or little pencil function to cross out the sizes that I don't need. And then obviously one of my favorite things about this app is this little, let me see what line am I on? Seven, I'm on line seven. I can move this up and down so that when I do a row on the chart, I can follow along. <laughs> but it's just so good. I just love it so much on this like bigger format. And I know a lot of people knit from patterns on their iPod, on their iPads. And I'm so excited to finally have one to be able to use it for this. It's wonderful. I've always loved a knit companion on my phone, but I've never really been able to write on it in an easy way. And now with the iPad and like the pencil that I have, it's so easy to write on my pattern digitally. It's so good. I love it. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to get back to reading and knitting and watching YouTube and drinking coffee because I still can't stop drinking coffee when I'm sick. I did have some tea this morning, which I haven't had in a long time. I go through, I'm like a seasonal tea drinker and I had coffee, tea for the first time this morning and it felt so good on my throat. Oh, my throat's so sore. Hold out, I tend to read more nonfiction. So we'll see what the future holds. Next space is the succulent space. Seeing as succulents grow in hotter climates, this is a book that will make you hot. Open for interpretation. You Yeah, it's a few days later. Yeah, I'm in the same spot. And yeah, I'm still sick. This thing's crazy. Whatever we've got, it's been tearing through my family and it lasts a long time. So my big time sexy, witchy, Halloween vibe October plans have turned into uh, frumpy bedtime reality. But that's okay. We're gonna get through it and it's gonna be fine. I haven't done as much reading as I wanted to, but I have been knitting quite a bit, which is really cool. I just finished listening to House Apollo and it was so good. I flew through that audiobook so fast. It's dark, it's fun, it's grotesque, but in a really pretty way. It's sexy without having any sex or romance in it, which I really enjoyed. I'm not the biggest like romance person when it comes to literature. And I really appreciated that this book didn't have any romance in it. There is one uh, like love interest relationship, but the book isn't focused on that at all. It's not focused on the romance of that relationship. The book focuses on the three sisters and their relationship with each other. And the love interest person was a wonderful character and I loved him. It was just so good. And I just really appreciated the lack of the romance arc, which is something that I tend to not care about. And that tends to be really prevalent in books like this. Books that are witchy or fantasy or based in like fairy tale lore. I think subjects that are typically associated with women, people seem to stick romances into. <laughs> and I like all of that stuff. I love fantasy. I love the fairy, the dark fairy tale imaginings. Um, I just don't care about the romances that often go along with those things. So, oh, I just loved this book for so many reasons, and that was one of them. It's such a good book to read at this time of year. I'm really happy I picked it up in October. I'm still slogging my way through Frankenstein. Uh, I haven't done that much physical book reading, so just kind of before bed I've been picking up Frankenstein, and I'm only on, like, page 30 out of, like, 200. So I'm really enjoying it still a lot, but it's slow. I want to pick it up more while I have a little bit of time right now. I really expected to be listening to House of Hollow throughout the whole month of October. I didn't know I was gonna fly through it so fast, but since I have finished it, I can start on one of my bonus books, which is Leech by Huron Enos. And I'm pretty excited for this one. I think this one's gonna be pretty creepy. Here's my progress on my cardigan. I finished the armhole stuff. I've joined in the round. And now I'm just gonna be working straight down for a little while. The only things that I'll be doing that aren't just working straight up stockinette are the button bands, which are still, and are always gonna be on these double pointed needles. And I'm also working uh, buttonholes into the button bands. So 
I'm really, really liking this pattern. It's really nicely written. She includes these little charts to keep track of the little fiddly bits, which I really appreciate, and they work really well. And I'm really enjoying working the, on this. I kind of forgot how good it feels to like see your progress as you work down on a sweater and as it gets bigger and bigger. I am having so much fun with this project. It's a really great like welcome back to knitting kind of project. I love it. You guys wouldn't believe the plague that hit around here. It's been like legit almost a month since everybody's been sick and people keep getting better and then getting sick again. This is me and my whole family. I'm just starting to feel a little bit better. It's almost the middle of October and I had planned to do like almost daily vlogging for this um, reading and knitting challenge of mine in October. And that has not happened, so I don't even know if this is just going to be one video at the end of the month. I'm hoping to at least do two videos, put this one out in the middle, and then one at the end. But anyway, I just finished Frankenstein, and I get it. I totally get it. It's a very classic-y classic, and uh, I get all of the... I get why it's classic. I get all the buzz. I get all the hype. I get why people feel the way they do about it. Um, it's a social commentary, and because of that, and because of how um, kind of well it was written, it's uh, super duper annoying to read because the characters are just horrible. Victor Frankenstein is just a total pussy and a coward and so self-important. <laughs> The monster, the poor freaking monster, like I get it, he he let evil overcome him and he killed a bunch of people, sorry, spoilers, I don't know, it's Frankenstein, you guys know Frankenstein, but man, he was born, I mean just like picture, like, like I just kept picturing like a baby being born and being completely abandoned and being constantly rejected and then having to grow up and uh, develop their own ideas about life with only those interactions with the world around them like yeah yeah okay anyway yeah Frankenstein was good it was pretty good you know my uh, my inability to relate to a lot of classics definitely came through in it but I really enjoyed reading it uh, and the next book that I picked up to read out of my stack of books is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson and I have been told over and over how good this book is and how much people love this book and I'm so excited to read it. I have wanted to read this book for so long and I'm very excited. I'm definitely farther behind on where I was hoping to be in my stack of books by the middle of October, but I think I can still get through it. The audiobook that I have right now, Leech, uh, it's about, um, I'm not sure yet if it's a virus or a bacteria, but it's about illnesses 
and it's told, I believe, from the point of view of the virus or whatever it is. And I found <laughs> I couldn't really listen to it over the past week or so because I've been so sick and I got to a couple points during the night when I was like trying to fall asleep or I was like in my head, like kind of doomsday fantasizing about my own illness and like, am I going to have to go to the hospital? It got really bad. Um, and so I kind of couldn't read a book, a gothic horror novel about viruses. So I had to put that one down for a little bit, but I think I'm ready to pick it up again, but I'm very excited about this one. And then after this, I just still have three more physical books, The Woman in Black, Mexican Gothic, and Camellia. And the one I'm most worried about is Mexican Gothic, because that's a longer one. All of these books are pretty short, but that's like a pretty regular length book. But I think it's going to be good. My knitting has been going great since I've been sick. I'm very far along on my Chartres cardigan. I'm really enjoying it. I also have yarn picked out for the Pressed Flowers cardigan, which I think is a new pattern by Amy Christopher's. Let me show you. Here's my Chartres. I'm in the middle of a row, but there is, okay. Okay. I know how to do this kind of thing. Here. So here it is. Top down, there's the armholes. I've got the collars going at the same time as the body. And that's how much length I have. I think it's looking pretty good so far. I've got a ton of yarn left. I'm still on like my first big ball of yarn. So I don't know, I might have a bunch left over. We'll see, but this has been amazing to work on. And for the pressed flowers, I saw this pattern on Ravelry and was immediately excited about it. I loved the idea and the look of the shawl when it came out a while ago, but I knew it wasn't something I wanted to make or wear. But the cardigan looks right up my alley. It's a v-neck cardigan and it's got drop shoulders, which is like my favorite. So it's a sport weight pattern. I have... <laughs> This yarn, which is Elsa wool, and this is a sport weight woolen spun Cormo. I bought this yarn to make a different cardigan pattern, and I then realized I loved the look of the cardigan, but it's not the style of cardigan that I will actually wear. So this has been sitting in my stash. Unfortunately, because the original one that I wanted to make was a colorwork cardigan, I have this kind of strange assortment of different colors. So I haven't been able to find a good pattern to use this yarn for but I decided I would use it for the pressed flowers and just do kind of a gradient for that main color. And I'm gonna start at the bottom with the darkest and then do the medium gray up through the middle and then the top shoulder area will be the light. And I think it's gonna be kind of weird, but it's okay, I think it's gonna work fine. And for the contrast, I really wanted to make some hand spun work, but I didn't have enough of anything in my hand spun stash and I didn't want to actually spin something for it because I kind of wanted to get going on it right away. So I found this in my stash that I got from, I think a D stash at some point. Uh, and it's a lace weight, it's Blue Moon Fiber Arts Lacy and it's extra fine 80s Merino. I don't know what that means but this is it. So it's a really dark tonal. It's purples and browns and blacks. And I figured I would hold this double and it would give me a pretty good gauge. It's a pretty loosely plied, pretty fluffy looking yarn. So I think it's gonna pair pretty well with this. And I'm really excited about that. I really want to get this one on the needles. Uh, I'm a little weary of having two sweaters on the needles now, so I'm going to wait and see how things go with the Chartreuse before I start this. But I have it all bagged up and ready to go in my very October appropriate bag, and I'm very excited about it. I also really want to cast on a... It's a Pearl Soho cuffed beanie pattern. And I made one for Lucy a while ago and it's her go-to hat. It's wonderful. It's a worsted weight, just plain stockinette beanie with a ribbed cuff and a pom-pom. And I want to make another one of those for River. He's starting to grow out of the last hat that I wore him. That I wore him. I'm still really fuzzy up here that I made him and it's getting to be hat season around here. So I really want to make another one of those. My knitting mojo is definitely coming back and I am so excited about it. Okay. <sighs> I have uh, an internal struggle right now because I'm still not feeling good. I'm not 100% and I have about two more hours before it's time to pick up Lucy from school, have the house to myself, 
do I do work, which I have a lot of work to do. I'm like super behind on work stuff. Or do I rest and knit and read? I mean, I'm probably going to rest and knit and read. That's what I need right now. Also, me and Lucy did manicures last night. This is the kind of stuff I should be filming for my vlogs. But <laughs> uh, I had Lucy choose my nail polish color. I was really hoping she was going to choose the dark purple because I really wanted that for Halloween, but I'll do that next. But she chose like a red and then gold sparkle for on top. And her nails, I um, have this like kid nail polish for her called Ello, Ella and somebody. It's like a little elephant brand. I don't know. But uh, she always likes to paint her nails, each nail a different color, and then the hands match. And I let her use some of my gold sparkle on top. So her nails look really good too. Maybe I'll show you later. But that was fun yesterday. We were both home and sick. And um, it was nice to do a little mother-daughter manicure. Okay. I think I'm going to go get in bed. Again. Do you want to hear the first sentence of We Have Always Lived in the Castle? I kind of like reading for census sometimes. Look at this mushroom. I love the artwork on this book. It's so good. <laughs> I was going to read you the first sentence. My name is Mary Catherine Blackwood. That's the first sentence. I'm 18 years old and I live with my sister Constance. I have often thought that with any luck at all, I could have been born a werewolf because the two middle fingers on both my hands are the same length but I have had to be content with what I had. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna go get started, I think. Also, I know I just can't leave. Uh, me and Lucy made these bookmarks a while ago. Uh, she really likes to collect flowers and press them. And so one day we took a bunch of her dried pressed flowers and um, just encased them in packing tape <laughs> and made bookmarks out of them. And I really like this one. I asked her if I could have this one and she said yes. She has some really cool ones though. Okay, so I think this is gonna be my bookmark for We Have Always Lived in the Castle. Well, I think I'll be leaving you here for this part one of my October vlog. It is the next day, and luckily Lucy is out today, River's napping, and I am feeling much better. So that's kind of amazing. I have got, we have always lived in the castle that I've been reading so far this nap, and I'm really enjoying it a whole, whole lot. I have got some work I need to get done today. I'm going to be sending out my Patreon yarn today, and I've got that all piled up here and ready to go. Today I'm wearing my Be Thankful cardigan by Lily Kate France, which is one of my very favorite cardigans. I'm also wearing some hand-knit socks like I was yesterday. Uh, yesterday's socks were <laughs> um, nomadic yarns, and they were some knee socks. And today's socks are some hand spun. And this hand spun is from a bat that I carded myself on my drum carter. And so that's what's happening today. It's been a nice day.
I'm glad I feel better. Everybody's feeling a little bit better today. And I will see you all in the next vlog. It's probably going to be up at the end of October. I would love to hear about any special October plans you have this month. Are you going to the pumpkin patch? Are you decorating for Halloween? Are you doing some, I don't know, cool, dark, witchy, fun things with your time? Let me know. Are you making your costume? I would love to hear about it. Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, please feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos and stuff. Okay, I'll see you next time. Love you.